Well, good evening and welcome to Tea for All Reasons Facebook Live. <laughs> Technical issues. Uh, Dad used his phone for the preview music and uh, it continued playing in his pocket. Um, but welcome, I'm Jen Clunan of Tea for All Reasons and um, I am happy that you are joining us. Tonight it is just me. Um, although my dad is manning the camera and my daughter Molly is going to be monitoring comments and questions um, throughout the evening. Um, and so if you do have any comments or questions, feel free to chime in in the comment section and she will make sure that I get the questions as we go through the evening. And so tonight, um, oh, and mom is not here tonight because she is with my sister um, up in New Jersey for the Hallmark Christmas Convention. Um, they're having a fabulous time up there meeting all the Hallmark Christmas movie stars and other fans. And so that's why uh, it's just me tonight. And, uh, and she is posting on the T for All Reasons page here. If you scroll down the page a little bit, she's posted some pictures of, of what they've done so far. Um, at least yesterday's stuff. I'm sure she'll post today's stuff later or tomorrow. Um, and then they come home tomorrow. Anyway, so um, with that, we're going to get right to it where I would normally do some administrative stuff to start. I'm going to actually do that in the middle. So I'm going to start off with the baking demonstration because um, that's why you're here is for a baking demo. And then We'll take a short little break, and when we come back after the break, after I've had a chance to reset, I'll do the tea demo, which the teas that I've selected to show tonight are um, complimentary for the baked item that I'm going to be um, showing you, um, so that it's a, a pairing for you. And, and then I'll show you some other last minute Christmas gifts, stocking stuffers, and um, there is going to be a giveaway. I will show the giveaway and give you the key phrase for the giveaway um, toward after that break. Um, and with that, we are just going to get right to it. Um, oh, I'll remind now and then I'll remind again at the end. So we're getting into the last minute uh, Christmas shopping for online purchasing. Um, what I've set on the website, if you notice on the website, there's a store notice at the top. It says that December 12th, which is tomorrow, is the last date to order for me to be able to guarantee that the, the order will get to you before Christmas. If I push it to the 14th or 15th, I still can probably assure you that your items will get there before Christmas. But if you want to make sure that they're going to get there before Christmas, you need to order... Um, today or tomorrow, maybe Monday. Um, and that gives me time to process your order and get it out um, into the mail. And I can ship directly to a gift re recipient. I don't need to ship it to you necessarily. I can ship it directly to whoever you want to give the gift to. So um, you just put that in the shipper information when you place your order. And with that, we'll just get right to it. So we are doing a baking demo. Um, we, I say we, we, the royal we, um, and it is out of the cookbook, um, and this is the cookbook, and you can get it at tforallreasons.com. This is my copy, and it's a little beat up and dirty, um, but I'm doing the cranberry walnut squares that, that are on page 64, and it's part of the, um, frosty winter's day tea, um, collection of recipes in the cookbook. Um, and so it's cranberry walnut squares and I actually made these uh, to take to Thanksgiving and they were a huge hit. And my kids like them. If my kids like them, your kids might like them. Um, they're actually delightful. They're really good. They have the nice tartness of the cranberry and there's a little bit of citrus in there and they're of course sweet. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make these cranberry walnut squares. So to start, you preheat your oven to 350, and I turned on the oven before we started here. And then you do want to grease your pan, and so you can come show this. I'll move this out of the way. So the pan that's recommended is a jelly roll pan, and that's a 15 by 10 by 1. 
Um, and you can see this is smaller than a regular cookie sheet. Um, it's 15 long, 10 by 1. I had a hard time finding one of these in the store. Um, I had to, this is my mom's, um, but I had to order one off of Amazon. And I actually think mine is smaller than this. It's like 14 and a half by 9 and a half by 1. Um, but it worked. It works. Um, anyway, so it you do want it greased. And so I'm just going to, now this is how I grease. I do this. And then I get a paper towel to make sure that the whole thing is evenly greased. Oops, wrong catnip. And I didn't do that ahead of time. So I just spray it really liberally and then I take the paper towel and I make sure it gets in the rounded corners and around the sides. And it doesn't need to be the, the filling in these bars is, um, it's very sticky, but I found that it doesn't need to be a really thick layer of, of grease to keep it from sticking. Um, they just, they didn't stick. So there's that pan is ready to go. And so now we're going to move over to the mixer. The mixer. Um, this is a two-stage baked good where we're going to do the cookie crust. First, and that goes in the oven and while the cookie crust is baking we'll do the filling and so the cookie crust is a cup of cold butter and I already staged it in the bowl um, I actually it's two sticks of butter and I cut up the sticks into like four or five pieces there you go you can see um, into the bowl so it wasn't the whole stick in the bowl so it's a cup of butter, two sticks, two and a half cups of flour, and that's what's in this bowl, two and a half cups of flour, a half a cup of sugar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And you want it, this in your mixer. So I'm going to set this up. And I have a KitchenAid, but my, mine is different from my mom's, so. And then you get the beater up in there and then okay hers is a little more complicated and you're going to start it on low because that flour is going to puff up so i cover it with my hands and i put it on one and you're going to mix this until it's fine so it's going to be a finer um i'll show you it's going to look like sand it's going to be um a finer crumb than for a pie crust. In a pie crust you want bigger chunks of butter. In this it doesn't matter. Um, but it's it's going to look like sand. So we're going to let that go for a while. Actually it takes a while. I'm going to put that on a higher setting. Do you want to come over and show it? I'll pull it out. Can you see it? So we're going to let that go because um, you do want it to look like sand. Yep, fine crumbs is what it says in the, in the cookbook. And we're waiting and this is where I'm not good at filling in the, the time. Um, I know, stretch. I don't have any filler, sorry. Um, all right, you can bring it in, I'm gonna show you. So this isn't quite ready yet. You can kinda, I don't know, maybe you can. Nope, that brought it right back around. I don't know if you can see, it's got some chunks in it, bigger chunks, more like a pie crust, if you can see those. They're still a little too big because this is more of a cookie crust. It's not a pie crust. So you don't need for it to be flaky like a pie crust. You want this to be more like a cookie. And in order for it to be cookie-like, you want that buttered really small. 
but it's close, so we're going to let it go a little bit longer. And I thought about doing this ahead of time, but I know some like to see this uh, done live, so I opted to show you that. But it just means we wait a little bit. And I do recommend doing it in a mixer. I think you could do it with a hand mixer as well. Um, it might take longer and it, it's going to take some work because you're going to have to get that hand mixer really going around in your bowl. Um, but if you have a, a stand mixer, this is the way to go. Almost. We're almost there. enough. What's nice is, unlike actual cookie dough, nothing really sticks to the beater, which is nice. So I can still see some larger chunks of butter, but you can see how fine it is. For the most part, it's pretty fine like sand. There is butter pretty well mixed in here. I can feel it. It's hard to see but I can feel the difference in the texture because that butter is in with that flour and the sugar and the little bit of salt. Um, so I'm gonna make sure all that stuff at the bottom was, yep, we look good. Okay, so now we take it over to the pan. Oh wait. And we're gonna basically just dump this all into the pan. And you can see it looks pretty dry, but don't worry. It's got plenty of butter in there for it to do what it needs to do. I'm going to try to scrape out all of this because we're going to reuse this bowl for the next step. So I want to try to get out as much as I can. Okay, so this is where you're going to then press it into the bottom of the pan. So I actually... I use a cup measure that's flat on the bottom to kind of spread it out, push it into the corners, make sure it's level, and that way your hands don't get dirty. You are going to end up having to use your fingers around the edges to make sure that it all gets pressed in because you do want it pressed all the way around, but I want to make sure it's all level first, and then I'll actually do the pressing. I feel like we need more over here. Okay, so then I just use the cut measure to press as much as I can, as close to the edge as I can. And you want all of the edges to have that cookie dough all the way because the filling is then going to get poured on top. And I like that the cup measure does the work. I feel like that's too much there. And I also use it to just push, push it where it needs to go. Because you do want it level. And it's pretty forgiving. But you can see it is packing down. Okay, and then I use, because I have nails, I use the backs of my fingers, my knuckles, and I did wash my hands before we started. I use the, the knuckles to push it down on the edges. Okay. Okay, and where this is different from a pie crust, you don't need to prick it with a fork. This isn't going to puff up at all. There's no leavening in it to cause it to puff up while it bakes. It literally is just going to bake like this. Just to melt that butter in it and make it magically cookie-like. Okay, so that is ready to go in the oven. So we're going to put this in the oven 
here. <laughs> Um, and it goes in the oven for 20 to 23 minutes. Wait, the kitchen timer, 20. I'm going to put 20. My oven, it takes 22. Um, you're going to cook it until it's slightly golden. You don't want it too dark. Um, slightly golden brown. And then you're ready for your filling. So that's step one. So now step two, and Dad, you can come around. We're going to make the filling. And like I said, we're going to reuse this bowl because there's no need to worry about that little bit of butter and flour that's in there. Yeah, I'll just use it as it is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here so it's out of the way. Okay, so the first thing we do is we're going to beat eggs, and we got four eggs. And I didn't pre-crack these. I probably should have. And I recommend, um, that doesn't want to, there we go. I always crack my eggs on the counter. I know a lot of people grew up cracking their eggs on the side of the bowl. You run the risk of little pieces of eggshell going into your bowl by cracking it on the side than you do if you crack it on the counter. That's what they taught me in culinary school. So ever since then, I've been cracking my eggs on the counter. It makes a little bit of a mess, but... Questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, the question that J Molly just gave me is can we use parchment paper? I'm going to wipe my hands, I got egg. Uh, use parchment paper instead of greasing the pan? You can. I, um, I, I think that you would prefer to use to, to spray the pan. Um, because you can't always get the parchment paper in the corners well and you'll end up with funky corners. But if you don't care about that, um, like if you're just planning on slicing off the edges and nobody gets an edge, then yeah, use the parchment paper and then you can just list, lift it out to, um, to do the cutting. But, um, yeah, just put in the cloth there. But, um, I didn't want, I, I like to serve the edges because some people like the edges and, um, and I didn't want the cookie I was afraid that if I had parchment not going into those corners well, that you'd end up with funky corners. Not enough cookie base in those corners, or the the filling would go under um, and not do right. So, but you can definitely try to use parchment. Um, no reason why you couldn't. So, okay. So that's that question. Okay. So it's four eggs, and this is a cup of sugar. Just regular sugar, white sugar, one cup, and uh, one cup of Cairo, and it says it can be light or dark. This is half and half. Um, I like the color that dark Cairo gives to, um, to desserts. It adds a nice color to it, and I was afraid that the light Cairo would be too light. And so I do half light, half dark. And the tip for you is spray the cup measure, and then the Cairo just slides right out. So since I pre-staged this, I sprayed the inside of the cup measure before I poured the Cairo in there. And you'll see when I pour it into the bowl that it literally just slides right out. I don't have to worry with fighting with it. It it's just comes right out. And so that's a cup of Cairo, and that is a lot of Cairo, but you need it. And see, you can see the inside, it's not clinging in there at all. All right, Cairo. And eggs, corn syrup, sugar. Oh, I forgot to melt the butter. Uh, 
you can show them what that looks like on the inside. <laughs> I'm melting butter. Okay, so uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so the egg, sugar, Cairo, and the melted butter go into the, the base of your filling. And I will get my melted butter because I'm unprepared. Getting there, getting there. Okay, and I'm just gonna pour that in. It's mostly melted, so it'll work. And that was three tablespoons of melted butter, unsalted butter. All right, and then you're gonna mix that together. So I'm gonna turn on the, oops, gotta look it up. Because mom's is different. Okay, so you're gonna mix that really well. And it takes a while for the Cairo and the eggs to melt together. Can you come over? And you can kind of see it's coming together. I'm going to lower this and give it a scrape around the sides. And make sure the stuff in the bottom is getting mixed in. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to let it mix a little bit more. I can't reach that. Okay, I'm going to give it a, another minute. Let that mix really well. We'll let that go so you can back up because then I'm going to move into this. Okay, and then we're going to get into the fillings that go into this base. And hopefully everyone can hear me over the mixer. Um, you can hear me? I guess you can hear me. Okay, so uh, one orange, and this is a little larger than probably is needed. The recipe says one small orange. Um, I couldn't find oranges smaller than this. Um, and this is a thick skin orange, so I'm actually going to uh, have to peel all of that pith off of there. You're going to use two cups of cranberries, and I'm actually going to do this first. Okay, so that's mixed pretty well. So these are rinsed, and these are fresh cranberries. You can use frozen cranberries, but they do you do want them to be uh, fresh, not the craisins. You can't use the craisins for this. It's got to be the, the fresh whole cranberries. So I'm going to pour these. Now the recipe says chopped cranberries, but I'm going to chop them in the food processor first. So I just pour them around a few times to kind of rough chop. And you can see that these are rough chopped just to get things started. I might pulse it a couple more times. to get it started to make sure. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then uh, the recipe calls for uh, orange zest and the actual orange. And so I'm gonna use this microplane, which is a great zester. And this is part of the giveaway. And I'll, don't, there's no key phrase yet because it's a two-part giveaway. I'm giving away two items tonight together. Um, but I am giving away a microplane zester, and what's great about this is, is, and I've washed the orange, you just run it along the outside of the orange to get the zest, and it collects it in that channel. It's fabulous, makes, makes it so much easier. You're not trying to catch the zest from one of those old traditional zesters, and, um, and it does a great job. You can use this to shave chocolate. Um, Zesting, I mean, however else you would use a, a citrus zester, this, this is the way to go. But if, and if you want shaved chocolate on a cake or dessert or whatever, this is, is a good tool to use for that too. 
So I'm just going to zest this entire orange. The recipe says one tablespoon of orange zest, but if my orange gives me more, that just makes it even better. And you don't want to go too far into the pith. The white part of the orange peel is called the pith, and that is the bitter part of the orange. If you've ever eaten that, you know it tastes bitter. You don't want to eat that, and you don't want that in the bars. Um, and so I tend to leave it pretty orange when I do my zesting. And I can smell that. So the, the zest of the orange is where all the oils are. Um, so when you are um, looking for essential oils, the, the zest of the orange is where they're getting those oils. It doesn't come from the fruit inside. Can you smell that, even with your mask on? And this, we're going to get a lot of zest with this orange. I thought about doing this ahead of time, but I wanted to show using the, the microplane. So it's a little, little tedious for you guys to just watch me continue to zest this entire orange. I probably should have done most of it ahead of time. But almost there. And that's quite a bit of zest. That is probably a good tablespoon plus. And that's just going to add to the deliciousness of these bars. And then I just, it's not sharp on the inside. Don't run your finger on the outside that I just used on the orange or it's going to zest your finger. But it literally can just run my finger down the channel and all of that zest goes into the bowl and you don't miss, you don't waste any of it. And you can see all of it is out of that, that microplane. There's no le none left in the microplane. Anyway, so like I said, I'm gonna give one of these away. And now I'm just gonna trim this orange to get the peel off. Um, I normally would just use my fingers, but I've got a Band-Aid. Um, so I'm gonna Do it this way and see how much I can get off. There we go. And I can tell already this is a really juicy orange, so this is going to be great. So you want to get all that white stuff off as much as you can without losing fruit. Alright, and then I'm just going to cut this in half because this is going to get chopped up in the food processor. I think the recipe says to put the sections in there, but you're, you're literally pulverizing this in the food processor. So I just cut it in half and then in quarters and put that in the food processor. And I think that's it. Chop cranberries, oranges, and orange zest in the food processor. And so that is what we are going to do. So I pulse it instead of turning it just on, um, just so that I can watch it. I don't want the cranberries to be pulverized into liquid. You want some, some chopped cranberries. But you need all that orange mixed in there really well. Mm, it smells so good. All right, so we still have orange pieces. So I'm gonna... That looks pretty good. Okay. And like I said, I did wash my hands before I started this. So here's what it looks like inside. You can see you've got some some big chunks of cranberry but most of them are pretty small um, and we are going to I'll just use this 
We're going to add this mixture to what's in the mixing bowl. I did that wrong. All right. All right. So now we're adding this into our mixture. And you're adding it all at once. You have a question? What's the question? I somehow lost the ability to type in chat. Oh, I won't be posting the recipe. So it's in the cookbook. So if you want the recipe, um, you'll need to get the cookbook. <laughs> so. Or watch the video. Or watch the video. I did give the um, measurements in the video. All right, get all of this goodness because there's juice in the bottom of there. Okay. All right, so we're going to give this a good mix because you want this all mixed up together and it's going to be beautiful, beautiful red color. Mix it by hand just to make sure the side stuff gets incorporated. So it's pretty easy. The hardest part is cutting that orange. What? <laughs> Did you want to put it down there? Oh, okay, I get it. Dad's asking me to move my messy cutting board. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the, the nuts. So the recipe calls for walnuts, um, and they actually were supposed to go in the mixture in the food processor to get them smaller again, and I missed that step. Um, I'm actually using pecans um, instead of walnuts. Um, you can do it without nuts, uh, but I do think the nuts add a nice texture to the mix and um, and flavor as well. But if you have a nut allergies or whatever, um, then you can definitely leave them out. And that's one cup of chopped, uh, the recipe calls for walnuts, but like I said, I'm using pecans. And so they should have gone into the food processor with that cranberry orange mixture before I added it to this, and I forgot that step. Um, but I think they'll be fine. And so that's well mixed. And so now at this point, we are just waiting for the cookie crust to finish in the oven. And when that cookie crust comes out, you don't need to wait for it to cool. You're going to pour this right onto that hot crust and stick it right back into the oven. So I'm going to put this over here so that it's ready. Um, and yeah, so I'm not going to post the recipe since it is in the cookbook, but it's in the cookbook. And if you want this recipe or any of the other fabulous recipes that my mom has put together in that cookbook, then that's the way you want to go for sure. I'm going to wash that sticky stuff off. And our cookie mixture, our cookie crust has two more minutes. It's looking pretty good. And I think 20 minutes in my mom's oven is going to be good. Uh, clearly my oven needs to be recalibrated if it takes longer. Um, yeah, so did you show inside? So this is what it looks like when the nuts are added. And actually, if, if you did it right, um, the nuts would look a little bit smaller, but I think these are going to be fine. But you can see all the cranberry pieces in with the nuts. And it's, it's got a nice pink color um, as a liquid. When it cooks, you'll see that the cranberries kind of rise to the top, and they're very pretty. Okay. Okay, that were pot holders that used to go there. And we are at 20 seconds. 
Can you smell that? And there's our cookie crust. And it is a light golden color. So I'm going to turn that timer off. But I'm leaving the oven on. So we're going to put this crust here. Now you can see where I had bigger butter. See all those holes in there? That's because I, um, I had bigger butter pieces. So that, that's why you want that butter to be... You want that cookie mixture to be really fine butter pieces, like you don't even see butter pieces in there. Um, otherwise, you end up with holes in your cookie crust, like that. Um, but it's going to be fine. So then you just pour this over the hot cookie crust, and you want to make sure it doesn't go over the edges. And it's, it's going to be close to the top. The good thing about this is there's nothing, I mean, it does have egg in it, but it's really not going to puff up. Because um, that sugar keeps the eggs from puffing up when they cook. Get all that goodness out of there. All right, and then I just kind of push it. And don't worry about the liquid. Trust me, all that liquid is going to cook. It looks weird when you first put it in the pan. The first time I make it, I was in a panic thinking that I had done something wrong because it was so liquidy. Um, but it works, so you don't need to worry. All right, and then very carefully put this back in the oven without spilling any and without burning yourself because this pan is still really hot. There we go. Okay, so that goes in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to put 25 on the timer. 25 to 30. I think mine was usually done 25, 27 minutes, so we'll check it. What you're looking for is the jiggle. It's, it's, uh, it might have a little bit of a jiggle when it's done, um, but it shouldn't be like a liquid jiggle. So we'll, we'll check it. Um, I mean, you could shave your butter if you want to, but you don't really need to. If, if you're not going to use a mixer, a stand mixer, then shaved butter might be the best way to go. You get there sooner. Um, but if you have a stand mixer, just throw your, you know, I, I did, like I said, I did cut the sticks of butter into smaller pieces. Um, that definitely helps. Um, and you want it to be cold butter. So I, I actually set up that bowl a couple hours ago as I was preparing, and then I put it in the fridge to make sure the butter stayed cold. Um, but yeah, you can use shaved butter. You can cut your butter into tiny cubes before you put it in the mixer. Um, whatever's going to work for you. Um, the shaved butter might be good if you're using a hand mixer. It'll save you some of that work um, of, of mixing that. Um, so with that, it's about 8.40, I mean 7.40. So we'll take a 10-minute break so that I can kind of clean the counter off and set up for the tea demo. And then we'll do the tea demo portion of our evening. And so it's uh, 740 so we'll meet back in the other part of the kitchen at 750 okay so now's the time to go potty if you need to go potty okay <laughs> and we're gonna awkwardly transition <laughs> and I'll flip the thingy and we'll turn on the music so 10 minutes we'll be back
it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, take a look at the five and ten. It's glistening once again. Candy canes and silver lanes that glow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store, but the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. A pair of hop-along boots and a pistol that shoots is the wish of Barney and Ben. Dolls that'll talk and will go for a walk is the hope of Janice and Jen. Mom and Dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, there's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well. It's the sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start, and the thing that will make them ring is the carol that you sing right within your It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I am telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're awake. So big up for goodness sake You better watch out You better not cry You better not pop I am telling you why Cause Santa Claus is coming to town
We had to stop the music because of copyright. We were afraid we were going to get blocked. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back in one more minute. Right? Okay, welcome back. Thanks for uh, sticking with us during our break. And um, so the bars are baking. And so I'm gonna do the administrative announcements and the, um, that kind of stuff that I normally do at the front end. I'm gonna do that now. And then I'll do the tea demo and we'll see where the bars are at that point, um, how close they are to coming out. Uh, True story, confession, I actually baked a, a pan of them yesterday, so I have a finished product to show you if the bars are taking too long to cook. So um, I'm on, I was on my game for that. <laughs> so I will have a finished product to show you. Um, okay, so uh, I did want to, I said I would show you um, last minute stocking stuffer gift ideas. So a great Christmas gift idea is the... Um, the oh my gosh my my brain's not working the teas uh starter kit i don't understand why my brain's not working tonight it's terrible i have a regular starter kit and a deluxe starter kit so this is the box the size box for the deluxe the regular starter kit is a it's shorter uh, a little bit smaller because it doesn't get the extra fancy stuff that the deluxe box gets. So the um, the starter kit, the regular starter kit, um, you get four one-ounce bags of tea. Um, and it's a black, a green, a rooibos, and an herbal. And rooibos is herbal, but I count rooibos as separate from herbal because um, it's distinctive on its own. And um, so you get four one ounce samples of teas of the four different varieties um, in your starter kit. A perfect cup of tea spoon, which I'm going to demonstrate. 
and TSAC 1, which I'm also going to demonstrate. And so the, the regular starter kit is this, and you get a brewing instructions card, which is not in here, but every order, when you order from me, every order should have a brewing instructions card. Um, it's not on the back here. Um, and that goes in the regular starter kit. And then the deluxe starter kit is the four ounces of tea, the cup of teaspoon, the brewing instructions, a fabulous tea timer, and a strainer comes in the box. Oh, here's the cup. There's the card, brewing instructions card. And then one of these strainers comes with a little lid or cup. You can use it either way. Um, that's great for brewing your tea in your mug. It works as an infuser and a strainer. You stick it in your mug, which I don't have a mug here to demonstrate, because it's nice and deep and that ensures all your tea will be in the hot water. Um, and then you just pull it out and you have no leaves in your mug. So you get one of those in the deluxe starter kit. So that's a great gift idea if you've got someone who's thinking about tea or they've just started drinking tea and they're not sure what to do, what kinds of teas to buy. Um, that's a great way to start someone off with loose leaf tea. Um, and then, um, where to start. So I, I do sell these um, strainer infusers and I also have the collapsible kind that's great for traveling and I showed those last time as well. And then I also have the Paris teacup strainer infuser um, and, and then in the strainer, just strictly strainers, the Empress tea strainer which is the strainer and the little cup, if you can see that on the box. I don't have one outside the box. Um, there we go. There you go. There's the strainer and there's the cup. And this is one that you would use with a pot. So it fits over the cup and when you pour your tea, it's gonna pour through the strainer to collect the leaves. And then when you've done that, you stick it in the little cup and it keeps it from dripping or leaving tea on your table. So that's the Empress, and it makes a nice gift. It's a nice strainer. And then I have this um, spoon-like strainer that also fits over the cup. It's got the little tea, teapot on the handle, and it fits over your cup nicely. Works in the same way. And... That's that strainer. Go in there. And then I do have this um, infuser ball pincher kind that works it better for a mug. You don't want to use it for a teacup. It's not going to get submerged fully. Um, but this is great for a mug. You put your tea only in one half because it needs the room to expand uh, once the water hits it. And for those of you who've been with us, you, you hear this every, every time. But... Um, but that's how you want to do that. And then my mom gave the great tip of wetting it first before you put rooibos in there because rooibos has the small needles and they will go through that mesh. But if you wet this before you put your tea in the bowl, then it won't, it won't fall through, which I thought was a great tip. And then I do sell the tea sacks, tea sack one, which is great for um, a regular size mug and the two, which is slightly larger. Um, it'll hold more tea. I actually, um, just for ease of use, like the two, because um, it's just easier. It's got a wider mouth, but um, uh, at the top, it's just easier to get the tea in. But be both of these will work for a mug. And then the three, which is for a pot. Um, and it, it'll work for up to a eight cup pot of tea. And I don't have a pot spoon, but I did show the perfect cup of teaspoon earlier, and I'm going to actually use one when I do the tea demo. And I want to make sure this water is hot. Yep. And that's the normal necessity type stuff that's in the shop. And then of the specialty necess necessities, I have these tea clips. Um, and this is not a Christmassy one. I do have Christmas ones that I thought I brought, but I guess didn't make it. 
Um, and I'll demonstrate this. Um, these are great for tea sacks to, to close the tea sack and keep it from falling into your cup or your pot. And so uh, I'll demonstrate this one. And then I do have tea infuser balls. So this is a cup size tea infuser ball. It's the same size as, as the pincer kind, but it's the more traditional kind that has the chain that hangs over the side of your pot, or in this case, your this would work for a mug. Um, and I add um, embellishments to it to lengthen the chain so that it doesn't fall in. Um, and so this one is a chandelier crystal in blue, and I have a, a number of different kinds of chandelier crystals. And then these are two Christmassy ones that I have available, and I have a, a bunch more Christmas um, I'll show one at a time. This one's Christmas tree, and then this one says Merry Christmas, little Merry Christmas charm. And these are just samples. And then I have these. These are actually my last two of this style of um, tea clip. Um, and I did order more, so I'm going to have more that come to me sometime in January. So it's too late to get the other colors available for Christmas. Sorry, you came forward and then I came forward. Um, so I have the green one and the teal, and these are literally the last two of the batch that I had this year that are left. But these are great, and um, the little teacup actually has a little swirly center um, that you couldn't see because this was on the cardboard like a paper clip, but it's got the nice little swirly center. And then there's the clip part that goes on the tea sack or the tea bag. So I have those. Um, and then I do have tea wallets. And so these are the two Christmas tea wallets that I still have available in stock. The red star. I don't know if you can see the gold star on that. But you can see the inside. It's got six pockets. And these are great for tea bags. You can pre-fill your tea sacks and stick them in the tea wallet, and they're great to put in your purse. It protects the tea and also your purse uh, from getting tea in it. And then this Christmas motif, stripey, um, is also available. And these are the last two of the Christmas ones that I had. And then here are a few regular. Um, these are newer in the shop, the orange flower which is really pretty. These are great for every day. And then the yellow kind of patchwork motif. And then this floral stripe is also available. So these are in the online shop. And then I wanted to remind you of the um, tea cozies. I am doing a giveaway tonight. Hold tight, it's coming. It's coming. Um, the tea cozies, the wrap kind, and this is the card, the Christmas cardinal, winter cardinal, I think I may have called it in the shop. And this is for a six to eight cup pot. And then the cover type, this is a two, two to four cup. And then this is the six to eight cup, and you can see the size difference in these two. And I have several other non-Christmas in the store online as well. And then last but not least, and then I'll get to the giveaway, um, is this uh, tea travel kit. And I, um, I've shown this before, and I actually use mine. Um, it has, um, you can get it with no tins, you can get it with two tins, you can get it with four tins, and there are slots on both sides for the tins. Is that the timer already? Well, that was fast. Um, and it's got little pockets in here that you can put tea sacks in and then your travel mug will fit in here on this side um, as well. So I have two of these available in the shop and it would make a great gift if you have a tea lover that travels quite a bit. It's a great way to carry their tea on the road all in one place. That wasn't the timer? What? That's who, that, that was a really fast 25 minutes. Okay, well, we'll check that in a minute, but I'll get the giveaway. So the giveaway tonight is a cookbook and the microplane. So you get both. And the key phrase for the giveaway is micro book. 
right? That's what I said earlier, it was gonna be right. Micro book, all one word, micro book is the keyword for the giveaway and you get both the cookbook and the microplane. And um, that's our timer. That's bonkers and I haven't even gotten to the tea yet. So let me check that. All right, so we're gonna check for the jiggle. My glasses are steaming up. All right, that looks, that looks done. Because there's not much, there's nothing jiggling in there. You can't see any of the, there's no jiggle. So that's done. So we're gonna let that cool. That's crazy. And so you can see the beautiful color. So you want these to cool completely, absolutely completely, before you cut them because you want that filling to set um, because it is, um, it, it'll be really gooey and sticky and they won't cut in nice clean lines if it's not cooled completely. So we're gonna actually switch these out. So this is the one that I made yesterday, um, and it's obviously cooled completely. So I'm actually going to move it over here. And we'll move this one to the cooling rack so that it can actually cool on the bottom. Beautiful! All right, and we'll put this here. Actually, we'll put this right here over here and then I cut them over there. Back to the tea. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna come back to the tea. And then I'll cut these uh, to show you what they look like cut. Okay, so that was crazy fast. 25 minutes, just like that. Okay, so I was gonna demonstrate tea to go with the cranberry orange. And they're not even called cranberry orange bars, they're cranberry walnut bars, although I use pecans. Um, and so I chose four teas that um, complement those flavors. The first one, and also are kind of holidays-ish, can work for the holidays. So the first one is the obvious Melange Noel, which is cranberry and orange flavored tea. It's the first tea that my mom created um, when she started the business um, as a holiday tea. She has served this tea at all of her teas at Christmas time because she hosts a lot of teas and so I'm going to demonstrate this one for you real quick and the tea sack so here's the perfect cup of spoon, teaspoon and we're doing teacups so I'm just going to put one spoon although I might put two so that I can pour enough water um, in the teapot but for for a cup you only need one of these spoons so I do I tend to do heaping spoons. My mom does level spoons. Uh, yeah, Melange Noel is a black tea. Black tea, cranberry orange, some spice. It's fabulous. Um, so here's how I do the tea sack. So I open it up as wide as I can. I put the spoon in and then I turn it so that the bowl the, op the opening of the bowl faces the long end. That way, if any spills, it's likely to spill in the long end. And I, like I said, I am going to put two, two spoons in here. So here's the second spoon. So I'm going to put that in there, fold it up. I'm going to put my clippy clip on there to keep it closed. Oh, I got my Band-Aid. Don't want the Band-Aid in there. And we're going to put it in the pot and then pour the water. I'm going to let that go. You want that water to hit that tea in the tea sack. There we go. And I'm not doing too much water. And so we're going to let that steep for three minutes. Three minutes. Somebody reminded us that the Melange Noel is today's Advent tea. Yes, I was going to mention that. Melange Noel just happened to work out to be today's Advent tea. I did not plan that in advance. That was God ordaining how things were supposed to go today, apparently. 
Um, anyway, so Melange Noel, which is fabulous, and I can smell that. Oh, that's very exciting. For those of you who don't know, I had COVID in October, and I'm slowly getting smells back. Um, like, I, I could smell the cookie crust baking. I could not smell the rest of it baking. I can't. I never know when I'm going to be able to smell stuff. I smell car exhaust, which that's not, that's not fun. Okay, so we're going to let the Melange Noel steep. It's got two more minutes. And in the meantime, I'll do the herbal because the herbal can steep longer. Um, and so the herbal that I chose for tonight is Orange Grove Vanilla, um, which is exactly like it sounds. It's orange and vanilla, and it is delicious. It's got apple, rose hips, hibiscus, orange pieces, um, and some other fun floral things in there. Mm, yeah, I can smell that one. Uh, and it is a great, great herbal and would go really well with the, um, the cranberry walnut. It'll bring out that orange in the, the bars. And so we we'll use this pot. Stuff on there. And I'm going to do, again, like I did the other one, I'm going to do two. And I, I definitely heap the herbal because they're big chunks. And I want to make sure I'm getting the most that I can in that spoon. And I don't have a clip to use for this one. So I'm just going to hold it. That may not be tall enough. Pouring water in there. That's probably enough. All right. I'm going to let... I'm going to let the teapot hold it's holding very very short little I should have used larger okay we're at 40 seconds on the melange Noel and so I'm gonna bring this over and because I used a tea sack I don't need a strainer um, but once it's steeped you do want to take the tea sack out don't let it just hang out in the tea or it will get bitter um, if you want stronger tea, you want more tea leaves in your tea sack or your infuser or, or the pot. Um, you don't want to let it steep longer, you just need more tea. Steeping longer makes it bitter. Every single time it'll make it bitter. Um, and don't, just don't do it. And you got to be careful watching your green teas. Oh, uh, you know what I didn't show is the tea... The, the... Tea squeezer, tea bag squeezer, and I'm going to grab yours right here. So what's great to use with a tea sack or even a tea bag is this tea bag squeezer, and I do carry them in the shop. Um, they're available, and I use mine all the time when I use tea sacks because then you can squeeze every drop of tea. Got to get it wider. There we go. Get all that tea out of that tea sack. Because it will hold on to water, that liquid. Okay, that one's done. And so I'm going to pour it in this. And there we go. Beautiful cup of Melange Noel. I'll put that right there. Okay, and that's a black tea. And so we're letting the herbal tea go for a while and I didn't put time on that but herbal is very forgiving and so you can let that steep for longer than you would a black or a green or a white tea black tea three minutes green tea one to two minutes and white tea one to two closer to one green tea closer to two white tea closer to one um, because it, it those two will ooh, they get bitter if you go past the two minutes. And it, I mean like undrinkable bitter. Um, I oversteeped some green tea and I had to toss it. I'm pretty, I'll drink the bitter black tea, but green tea is, if you think you don't like green tea, it's because you've oversteeped it, I guarantee. Because green tea is actually fabulous, delicious, it's nice and mild. Um, and if it's brewed right, it's, it's great. What is the best way to keep green tea from having a bitter aftertaste. So there you go. Just don't steep it too long. Literally, you you don't walk away from green tea 
you put that water on it, you start your timer, and when that timer goes off, you strain it into your cup or you pull that tea sack out or whatever it is, you get that, that steeped tea, the tea leaves, out of that tea um, as fast as you can to keep it from getting bitter. Right? My dad's nodding his head. Absolutely, yes. Um, okay, so the herbal is going. So I'll do the other black tea that I brought, which was Turkish Delight, which is new. And I've shown this one before. Um, it was intended to be part of a Chronicles of Narnia collection, but I can't think of any teas for the rest of the Chronicles of Narnia collection. And so it's not part of the Chronicles of Narnia collection. It is Turkish Delight, which is a new holiday blend. Although... I think I might keep it in the um, the shop year round because it's really good and it's citrusy orange with raspberry flavor. It's really nice black tea. Um, I, it it smells good um, every which way. It smells good right out of the tin. It smells good in your cup. It's really really good and with a faint hint of vanilla. Okay, so into the tea sack. And it's got rose hips and orange bits and apple, hibiscus, uh, lemon peel, chamomile, um, strawberry leaves, raspberry pieces. It's a really, really nice. Actually, that's not going to be tall enough. That's too short for this pot. I'm going to make it work. All right, I'm getting ready to do this. Okay, if you can catch me pouring it, I'm going to try to do this without burning myself. Because you really want to get that hot water onto those leaves. You want to shock the... Yeah, yeah. it needs to go down in there more. It needs to go down in that water. I think it's good. We'll let that lid hold it and uh, turn, start the timer. And while that is steeping, I will pour out the orange grow vanilla. Move this back over here. Which turns a really nice pinkish color. I can smell that orange. Can you smell it? Okay. And I'll pour this in here to match where the tin was. And you can see that pretty color. So pretty. And that is the Orange Grove Vanilla. And you can see the difference. Here's the Melange Noel. The black tea has that nice amber color. And then the, the red, almost, of the Orange Grove Vanilla. And that's the hibiscus. Hibiscus... If it's in any tea, a white tea, green tea, herbal, it's going to make it pink. Those petals, the pink comes right out of that hibiscus. Um, okay. And then the last tea that I chose is uh, not fruity. It's um, pecan pie rooibos, which is not fruity. It's a nut tea. Four. Well, because the um, Turkish delight is... Okay, so the fourth one is the um, pecan pie rooibos, and I have a minute, so I'll show you this. Rooibos is naturally decaffeinated. Um, it's from that red needle bush from South Africa, and um, and this I can kind of smell it. It smells like pecan pie. Yeah, I don't eat pecan pie because it's too sweet for me, but my family loves pecan pie. And I know that it's popular during the holidays. Come on, get that. All right. And so same thing, you're going to use, even though it's a smaller leaf, you're going to use the... Um, okay. Um, same amount. It's the perfect cup of teaspoon, no matter what kind of tea you're doing. So I'm going to do two spoons of the pecan pie. I'll answer that question in a minute. And I'm going to use this cute little cut, uh, little teapot. I'm going to pull it closer to me. Pour the water in. And rooibos, like herbal, can be steeped longer. Typically three to five. 
if you uh, if you go to five, it won't be bitter. It just makes it stronger. So this is the exception of the rule, and herbal too, um, where you can let it steep a little bit longer, and it it's just going to be stronger tea for you. Um, it's it's the original Camellia sinensis plant that's going to give you that bitter bitter tea. Okay, so that was the timer for the. Where am I? Turkish Delight. Hopefully this was able to steep really well. I'm squeezing it out. See how much tea is coming out of there? Get every drop. Okay. And we're going to pour the Turkish Delight into here. may have had a little too much water because I had the issue of the, um, the height of the pot. But it is still a nice amber color. Um, and it does have more fruit in it than the Melange Noel, and that may be affecting the color as well. Um, because this is just tea with a few little extra fruity things in it. Um, and yeah, so we're waiting on the pecan pie. So somebody asked me while we're waiting for that, and I'll put two minutes on that. Are you going to try that? The Turkish Delight? Mm -hmm. Turkish Delight? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Molly's going to drink the Turkish Delight. It doesn't have any sweetener in it. Um, where are your tea leaves sourced? So, <laughs> I have, I, yeah, the whole world. So I don't um, import the tea myself. So I um, I buy from reputable tea importers here in the United States who do the importing um, for tea companies around the United States. Um, I have four primary sources where I buy most of my teas. Um, and uh, eh, there are a couple others, but um, but for the most part, I buy most of my teas from two two companies. With a third company, um, actually, the third and fourth companies are about equal, and I don't buy nearly the same amount from them as I do from the the main two. Um, but they're the ones who import the tea in. It comes from India, China. The rooibos comes from Africa, um, and they they're the ones who like I, I'm a small home-based business, and so I don't have the resources or the time to try to source raw tea to import myself and the cost of importing. So it makes me, way more sense for me to find the larger tea companies that do that and then buy from them. Um, and so that's how I, that's where I get my tea. But my mom actually, I inherited all of the knowledge and education that my mom did when she started the business. She, she was the one who really did the legwork to find those suppliers to make sure that they, um, that they were sourcing good quality tea and providing good quality tea. I know I've been, at, been asked the organic question in the past. The, the teas that come to me, when they come to me, they are organic. They um, how the tea is grown is organic. They meet the USDA qualities, you know, that are required for organic products. I can't put that organic title on my teas because once I open their bags of tea, they're no longer considered organic in retail sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but the but they are. Um, sourced properly, they're grown properly in ethical manners, you know, so yeah, so they meet all of those qualifications. Um, hopefully that answered the question. Okay, so the pecan pie is now ready to pour, and this is the rooibos. So it's going to be a redder, still brown, but redder than a typical black tea, because rooibos is 
just naturally a red color. Although it won't look as red as the Orange Grove Vanilla. Ooh, I can smell that. And there you go. Actually, that's pretty brown. So we have Melange Noel, and Molly took the Turkish Delight, and that cup is just about empty. It's empty. And the Orange Grove Vanilla and the Pecan Pie, which worked out well today since I used pecans in the Cranberry Walnut Bars. And so that's the tea demo, and if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Um, you, Dad, you can stay here. I will bring the bars here. I'm just going to close these up just in case we have food go flying. And then I'll cut the bars. So the recipe says, well, I messed that one up. There we go. To cut them in one and a half inch squares. So you don't want them to be two by two, otherwise they're pretty big. One and a half by one and a half seems a pretty good pretty good size. This is yours. It's like, this is mine? Yours? It's yours. Okay. Now I'll come around here. I know that doesn't work with that tripod. All right, give me just a second. Get my plate. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm going to use this, this is clean, this is called a bench scraper and um, it's used when you're making, you can use it when you're baking bread or cookie dough or any pizza dough. It's a good way to scrape your bench, um, your, your counter. In, in commercial kitchens they call it a bench. Um, but I like to use it for cutting because then I'm not going to scrape up the pan and it, it has a sharp enough edge that it should cut through. Um, and so we're going to try with this. I actually used a knife when I did them. So it's an inch and a half. Does that look like an inch and a half? Mm -hmm. And the recipe says you should get 60 bars. And I'm going to do a second row so that I can get them out. And just like pie, it's always hard to get the first one out. Actually, I'll do it from here. I feel like an inch and a half. I think I've gone all the way through. Okay. And you can see it's a little sticky. But not too bad. Stick that right there and I'm going to try to get one out. Usually the first one, oh look they came out perfect. Okay so remember this is the pan that I made yesterday at home and you can see they're, they are a sticky dessert but these are cooked all the way through and you can see the cookie crust Actually, can you see it on that end? You can see the cookie crust. And there you go. And they slide right out. So I greased my pan yesterday the exact same way that I greased that one earlier tonight. Literally just sprayed and took a paper towel and wiped that stuff all over the pan and it just slid right out. Now my pan is a non-stick. Um, it does have non-stick coating on it, but even with the non-stick, I still recommend spraying because this is very sticky, gooey stuff. So here you go, Molly. You want to try one? See if it gets the seal of approval. So I made this for Thanksgiving, like I said earlier, and we took them for a gathering with my husband's family. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me if it's any good. Good? I got the thumbs up. And um, they were a hit. Both of my kids were were bringing some of those home, right? They they wanted to make sure that they got more. So, if like I said, if my kids like them, I guarantee your kids will like them. And um, and they're a hit, and they're great for Christmas. They've got the nice, beautiful red color for Christmas. They're they make a statement, I think, since they're not brown, like a lot of baked goods can be. Can you see? Do you want me to put more? No? Okay. Alright. So, and so, 
with that, um, thank you very much for joining me. I hope that uh, I hope that you were able to um, take notes. I hope that you'll buy the cookbook because that's where you're going to get the recipe for the cranberry walnut squares, cranberry walnut bars, squares, bars, squares, squares. Yeah. Um, Question. Um, can you use apples in this recipe? That's a good question. I don't know. Apples have a different texture. So this is cranberries and oranges. Um, I You could do maybe half apples, half cranberries. Um, I wouldn't completely substitute out the oranges. I think the oranges are a crucial piece because you get that juice. You need the liquid from the orange juice in that filling. Um, but if you did half apple, half cranberry, I don't see why that wouldn't work because they're about the same texture. Uh, your flavor is going to be a little different because they do have a, um, they're not as sickeningly sweet as you would think given the quantity of caro and sugar in that filling. Um, they have a nice tartness to them because of that cranberry because um, those cranberries are tart. Um, but yeah, I, I would think the apple would work possibly. In a in a ratio like where you're taking out cranberry to add the the apple, that's how I would do that. So, any other questions? No. Okay, that was a good one. Um, so uh, anyway, I lost my train of thought. Micro book. Oh yes, yes. Thank you, Dad. Um, so the don't forget the giveaway is the cookbook and the microplane um, and micro book is the the keyword for that. <laughs> And like I do every time, I will, after church tomorrow, I'll go through all of the comments to find um, everyone who put in microbook if you're interested in the giveaway. And, um, and then Molly and I will post a video sometime tomorrow afternoon drawing the name out of the mug. And pardon me while I get some water. I've talked a lot. And, oh, and I sell these. Product placement. <laughs> to sell it all. I sell these beautiful thermal mugs in my online store, T for All Reasons logo, and they will keep your cold water cold and your hot tea hot, and they are fabulous. I have, How does it know? I, it's, it's a miracle, Dad. It's absolutely a miracle. I don't know, but it does work. I mean, my, my cold water is still cold. Um, anyway, my throat is dry. Um, yeah, so micro book for the giveaway, and um, tomorrow is the deadline for buying gifts. Do you sell the zester in the store? I do not sell the zester in the store. I had, okay, real, true, true confession, I, I was gifted too, somehow, and, um, and I remembered that I had the second one just hanging out in my kitchen unused it was still in the plastic and uh, and it does have a nice cover mine at home no longer has this plastic cover well I'm not gonna be able to get it back in there now that I ah oh. <laughs> why did I do why did I do that I'm not gonna be able to uh, I'll get it I'll get it oh, I got it uh, so it, it does have this nice cover it's never been used I do recommend that you wash it you got to squeeze it to get it back on there and you gotta have it. There we go. Uh, I do recommend that you wash this before you use it, because um, it's been hanging out in my kitchen for a while. Um, but yeah, I so yes, I'm regifting. But um, <laughs> but it's a great regift, fabulous. And um, honestly, you're gonna love this. You won't use it a ton unless you zest a lot. But when you do need to zest something, this is what you want. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. Anyway, microbook for the cookbook and the microplane. You can probably get them at a kitchen. Place. Yeah, you can get them on Amazon or, um, I mean, if you, uh, I don't want to say G O O G L E, but if you search on the internet, um, you'll find it uh, and stores that have it. I bet it's at Bed Bath and Beyond and kitchen stores like that, maybe even Walmart, Target. Um, so anyway, it's a fabulous, it's a, I, do, I highly recommend it. If you cook a lot and you do zest a lot and you've got one of those old zesters and the zest goes everywhere, you want one. 
Um, okay, so that's the giveaway. And yeah, so and then the deadline for last minute shopping is pretty much tomorrow. Monday, Tuesday, um, you're, you'll probably still get your order before Christmas if you order Monday, Tuesday. But after that, I can't guarantee that you'll get it by Christmas. I, I just can't. Because it takes me time to process your order. And then who knows what UPS is going to be doing in the last week before Christmas. Um, and like I said before, I can ship directly to your gift recipient if you want it to go to um, to somebody directly. I can definitely do that. And then, um, just to let you know, and if you've been in the group or on the page, you've already seen it possibly. <laughs> so my dad and Molly are fighting over <laughs> oh, buddy, the plate. There was one left on the plate. And Dad's like, take it. She's like, I don't want it. Take it. I don't understand. <laughs> he wanted you to take it. Um, she ate the whole thing. She did. Well, she did now because she's now nibbling on that fourth one. So, so. But anyway, as I was saying before, they distracted me. Um, I already posted the next Facebook Live, which will be just me again. Um, probably at my house, but I'm going to do a demo of winter slash Valentine's teas. Um, I realized last year that we missed an opportunity to show Valentine's teas to you guys by not doing a Facebook Live in January because it pretty much needs to happen in January for you, for you to have a chance to see those teas um, in time to get them for Valentine's Day. So I am going to do a Facebook Live, probably from the tea office, where I'll show and demo the Valentine's teas. Um, and I do plan on introducing one or two that are new. And um, that will be January 15th, 7 p.m., in the Facebook pay at the page, like normal. Um, and then February... Tentative date for February is the 19th, but we need to uh, nail that down. Um, we're not positive on that. But for sure, we're going to be doing one in February, you know, like we do every month. And with that, I think this is it. I hope that you guys um, have a very, very Merry Christmas. For those of you who celebrated Hanukkah, I hope you had a fabulous Hanukkah. Um, Thank you so much for your support this year. I am blown away at the um, at the wonderful friends that I have been able to make through this business and through the Facebook page and the group. Um, and uh, I know that my mom would say the same thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your engagement with us on Facebook. Um, anyone who's on Instagram, I apologize that I don't post more over there. I'm going to try to do better and, um, about posting over there as well. But I, honestly, so blown away and blessed by how supportive you guys have been for me as a new business owner, taking over, um, what my mom had started and, um, I just thank you. I can't thank you enough. And so I do hope, those of you who celebrate Christmas, that you have a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And because the next time I'm going to see you guys in this format will be next year, Lord willing. And so with that, thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you learned something new. I hope that you're inspired to bake something new for Christmas. And we will see you next time. Good night.